This is how I learned how to travel for free for over 10 years. My name is Jordan. I am a travel creator from Australia. If I wanted to see every country in the world, I could have done that twice already. How many countries have you traveled to? I've been to 82. I'd love to get into some detailed understanding of the content creation side of things. No one really talks about this, but if you can- What's been the worst country you've traveled to and why? That country is crazy. Cops pulled up and they're like, one of you is getting away. Then the police dropped me uh, on the highway at midnight and they just said, good luck. Oh! We can't do it! Oh! <laughs> Damn. All right, cool. That's a, that's a wild story. I'm so service level on the internet to have this conversation right now. It's like, there's more to Jordan than just a happy face. Today on that one time, I'm joined by Jordan Tuelli. Jordan is an Australian content creator and vlogger that has been full-time content creating for the last decade and has amassed a following of over 6.5 million on all of his social channels. He's an expert at storytelling, content creation, and budget travel. At the end of this episode, you will have a detailed understanding of some new potential travel destinations that you may never thought of going to. Hear some wild stories, explore the downside of traveling full-time for 10 years, as well as learn some of the finer details when it comes to travel content creation, storytelling, short and long form content. I love this conversation because Jordan is living the dream that many people aspire to have. So I think you'll enjoy this conversation with Jordan Tuelli. If you like this episode, please give us a rating on Spotify, a follow on YouTube or Spotify or wherever you are listening to this as we are on a mission to get to a thousand followers and every bit helps. Jordan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Of course, of course. Uh, Joe is our mutual friend and editor, editor now. So uh, it's uh, it's a nice little connection that yeah. was a little surprise. And they better make, make me look good in that uh, edit. He's good at making you look good, don't yeah. worry. You look great. He's gonna so. he's gonna do me dirty on one one of the short videos, I swear. I hope so. It's, it's, you gotta have it a little bit spicy. <clears throat> but look, man, I'm, look, I'm honored to have you here because I really love the work that you do. You're an absolute fucking jet at creation, like content creation and the way you write your videos, are amazing, they're engaging. Thank you. Like you do, I think, I think people should be able to feel comfortable traveling the world because I think it's an extremely impactful part of existing and work like the stuff that you do allows people to go, you know what, I can do this too, which is great. So- mm. Good yeah, job. Yeah, no, like <laughs> that is the goal. I mean, it wasn't really like I started out just wanting to travel, but um, I then gathered quite a young audience. So to this day, I have a lot of kids, like, you know, 12 to 15 that they'll come up to me like, you're the reason I want to travel. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's weird. Like that I'm introducing that concept. Like as a millennial, like we grew up almost wanting to travel, but I find like the younger generations don't have that natural desire to like travel. Yeah. They spent years in a room. So yeah, exactly. It they messes don't... with them a little bit. Yeah. So exactly. So like when I'm like, wow, like I'm the first port of entry to some 15 year old being like, Oh, maybe I don't have to do this life or maybe mm. I can just escape for a bit. So it's cool to have that sort of impact. Maybe there's um, more than just brain rot TikToks. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a lot of those two. Yeah. We yeah. have to all, we, we all have to like <laughs> rot a little, steep, <laughs> steep, yeah, <laughs> bend our morals, <laughs> pop a little dance. I haven't Stabidi. danced. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done too much dancing on TikTok, so don't yes. worry. Maybe we can end this with a nice little dance. <laughs> but I'm um, also on top of that, like storytelling is critical here. So I'm really keen to get into storytelling and and even design your the work that you do on like the thumbnails, and you can just tell that it's really really tastefully done and well thought out. So, but we, I digress a little bit. So I just want to get a feel for like, if you were to give an elevator pitch of who you are, what you do and how you're contributing to the world. We've touched on that a little bit, but love to hear it in some more detail. I'll be like, my name is Jordan. I am a travel creator from Australia that has spent the last 10 years going, this is my 10th year, traveling the world, living out of a bag, never paid rent in my life. Nice. Uh, took a gap year. Turned into 10. So that's the <laughs> quick elevator pitch right there. Brilliant, brilliant. And what does your work do for the world, do you think? Oh, 
I would say like very little in regards to if we're looking at global impact. Come but, on. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I just like, I just tell travel adventure stories. Um, yeah. So I do just diving into different countries, seeing their culture, seeing their history, seeing their landscapes, beauty, natural beauty. I love nature. So I'm always like, you know, if the country's got good nature, then I'm pretty much going to love it. But yeah, just explore the world for a living. Um, it's pretty good living. Yeah. Which is like crazy. <laughs> to, it's like one of those things where everyone wants that. Like, I feel like that's everyone's goal mm. at some point in their life. Yeah. I would love to just like get paid to travel. So the fact that I get, get paid, paid to, to travel, travel. <laughs> it's uh definitely take it for granted. So very stoked. Brilliant. And uh, like, how did we get here? What's the kind of the context of your, <clears throat> of your earlier years that kind of allow us to understand you and why we're sitting here right now? Well, I graduated at 21 with a graphic design degree. Mm. I, I just thought like, hey, I'm just going to be a graphic designer, you know, go to Sydney, live a normal life. Mm. And then I took, I was 21. So I was like, oh, well, 21 with a degree, we've got to mix it up and like at least do a gap year. Mm. So I, I saved a bit of money and I was like, sweet, I'll, I'll hit a gap year. Little did I know that that choice would change my life forever because I just realized I like travel more than graphic design. Mm -hmm. So I decided, whoa, I need to do that again and again and again. And then, yeah, I just sort of like through traveling and meeting people, I found a way to monetize that through social media. It took mm -hmm. way longer than what people probably think, especially because <laughs> I'm like really dumb at business. Like, sure compared to the average, like, you know, like people come in now with a social media mindset of like, I'm going to build social media and I'm going to monetize it in this way and this way and build this community and give this value. And I'm going to like cash out here, you know, mm -hmm. like they're very structured. <clears throat> I was just sort of like, Oh, I want to travel. <laughs> and if social media allows me to, to meet more people and then also like get free stuff, I'm like, wow, well, yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to help me travel more. So mm -hmm. That was my only goal, like starting out, like maybe like 2016, 2015. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, it sounds like you've hit your goal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, then some. It's crazy because like, I just wanted to travel full time. That would be, that was what satisfied me the most, which is funny because my goal actually limited me, completely limited me uh, when it came to like business. So it took me a long time to click into sort of the social media business side of things mm. and like, oh, actually, no, you can actually save a bit of money. You don't have to like just be living living frugally as you were. But uh, so it's funny how my goal I thought was so ambitious at the time in 2015. Wow, to travel the world forever. That would be <laughs> insane. And then now I'm sitting here like 10 years later, like, oh, no, that was a very like reachable goal. Yeah. I should have had something way more ambitious than that. So what's so. the goal now? Well, now it's just sort of like to like, because I still love travel, but I see it through a different lens. Like travel doesn't challenge me like it used to, mm -hmm. because I used to be like the unknowns of travel were scary. Mm -hmm. Where now you can drop me in most countries around the world and okay, like, oh, I'm here now. So I, I, I just know what to do. Like it's not, I know how to meet people. I know how to like travel in a sense. So that doesn't challenge me anymore. So the whole business side in the last few years has been more interesting, sort of like, yeah. And then along with that, I am like my, trying to restructure my brain in regards to like, hey, maybe you should actually find a place to like- Home base. base. Yeah, home base. Because I'm one of the few that have done 10 years straight. Mm. So- yeah. yeah, it's a long time. Um how do, you, how do you go meeting people? What would be like the top three tips to meet people in a new place? Mm, well, hostels are like the guarantee, but I'm always at that stage where it's like, oh, I'm a little old. Yeah. I mean, when I was 23, 24, 25, like you would just meet the coolest people at hostels. I still do, but um, yeah. So hostels, number one, two, there's just so many people that know so many people. So even if you just put on your Instagram story, Hey, I'm in, I'm in Zurich, Switzerland. Does anyone from my hometown know anyone? Mm. There's a weird amount of connections. <laughs> like you'll yeah. be surprised that like your like friend's mom that knows someone that you're like, Oh, well they're not even in my age bracket, but that could be fun. Mm. You know, like let's go hang out and you never mm. know where it goes. So 
And number three, just DMing people on social media. It's mm. insane. Mm. I basically built a career out of like going to like the location I wanted to go, DMing them and just saying, hey, I'm a solo traveler. I'm coming through. Um, would you like to show me around? Who are you DMing? Just random people on, oh, sorry. Random people on geotags. Oh, no shit. On Instagram, yeah. Like I would just, yeah, like if I was, oh, I want to do that hike in Hawaii. So I look it up. That's the hike, geotag. Look at the most recent. Here's all the people that recently went. And then hopefully they're like down to hang. I would never have thought of that as a potential way to meet people. Yeah, that's how I met like some of my best friends. Yeah, wow. Well, the guy that really got me into social media, that's how I met him. I just... Saw him doing a hike, a lot of hikes. And I was like, I want to do hikes. And I'm in Hawaii. And he was like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> and I met him once. And uh, yeah, now we're like besties. He's like going to his wedding next year. And that's like eight years later. Brilliant. So yeah, you never know what a geotag can do. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. How have you gone building deep, genuine relationships when you are traveling so much? Have you found it difficult? Um, it is tough. But it's a lot easier for me because I value, like, like I don't have, like, the biggest thing I can give is quality time. So because I am traveling full time, instead of being, like, caught up in, like, life being so busy with, like, what you're trying to do, like, I do genuinely have just, like, more time than the average person. Yeah. So, yeah, when I really <clears throat> want to, like, spend time with someone, I'm happy just to fly into their place, hang out with them for a week and just sort of like chill in that. Mm. So I think quality time helps a lot, but you have to be willing to put in the effort. Obviously like, yeah, go to the country or go to where they are and just exist essentially with them. Mm. But yeah, it I, on the relationship front, it's like, I don't know. I still haven't figured that out. Yeah, it's a tough one. That's the one where I'm like, yeah, I yeah. don't know. That's why I probably need to base because like having some sort of like consistent community is probably the one thing I miss the most. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've not, I'm not even close to the level that you are, but the last two years I've been spending between America and Australia and it's challenging on like mm -hmm. a romantic relationships front. It's challenging on friendship fronts. Like you just, hurting people <laughs> I know. everywhere you go. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to balance it. And then the thing, the problem, the most unrelatable issue in my life is literally, and like no one has this issue, which is why <laughs> it's not even worth bringing up, but I bring it up and people go, oh, Jordan, your life's amazing. Like yeah. this is your biggest issue, which is like, I have so many people that have loved me in the yeah. last like 10 years. And obviously I want to like, I want to invest in all these people, but I'm only one human. Yeah. So I have hubs all over the world, like where I can go. I'd probably count like six or seven major cities in the world where I would have people that I could just roll in no questions asked, knock on their door and they would happily like let me stay for a month. Yeah. Like, a, like that's unheard of, right? It's what Joe did to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sneaky Joe. But so, yeah, like, cause I have that. It's like, I feel almost guilty not being able to get around to all my friends yeah. because they've, they're, they're so invested in me and I want to invest in them. Mm. But it's just like hard. It is hard. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. So how many countries have you traveled to? I've been to 82, but How that's not that many. There? There's a, oh, well, that's a political question right there. But <laughs> give it a yeah. month. <laughs> Loaded. Yeah, no. No, there's like 100. The UN, the UN recognize 195. And then with Taiwan and Kosovo, which is some people would say it's part of Serbia, but most people see it as independent. Mm -hmm. And same with Taiwan, like people just see that independent of China. So. With you, Taiwan and Kosovo, there's 97, 197. Okay. So you're almost halfway there. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like I, 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 with 10 years of travel, I'm averaging like eight a year, which is actually really slow and <laughs> not that good. But like, I have never had the desire to try and like go to every country. Mm. All I really care about is like experiences and adventures. Yeah. So I've been to the Philippines like six times. I've been to France probably like 10 times. You know, yeah. like I've been to New York like 10 times. Mm. So yeah, if I wanted to see every country in the world, I could have done that twice already, but mm. I just do not care. Mm. Fair, enough. Know. Fair enough. That's fine. <laughs> country um, for country's sake. That is like, yeah, yeah. Just like dipping in and dipping out like that. 
there's no no value to me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, what's been the best country and the worst country you've traveled to, and why? Oh, best country is always a toss up, but like, I love the Philippines. Why? Just because I'm a real tropical boy, so sure. they've got the best tropics. I love free diving. They've got amazing ocean and marine life, and then the locals are super friendly, super awesome. Like, I feel like. I almost feel like you can just knock on anyone's door in the Philippines and they're there to help you out. So yeah, yeah, the Philippines is amazing and there's just so many islands to explore. But you wouldn't go to the Philippines if you really like cuisine because they probably have like <laughs> low-key one of the worst cuisines in Southeast Asia. You know, if you're stacking up against like Vietnam or Thailand or even like East Asia, like Japan. Mm. Oh, you amazing know. food at those three places. So yeah, like... If food is why you travel, probably don't go to the Philippines. <laughs> I know that's going to offend some Filipinos, but <laughs> but uh, if for every other aspect from an adventure to like the local community, the Philippines is the best. And then the worst, my worst experience was probably in Mor- Monaco. Oh no, shoot, not Monaco, Morocco. Morocco. Yeah, I never been to M- Monaco. Um, yeah, yes. I got robbed. I nice. got robbed in. Um, Marrakesh, Morocco. Mm -hmm. So that's naturally going to be like not a good time. But the thing that's funny about like worst and best is that for me, it just, it really just comes down to the people. Yeah. Like you can have the worst time in what is conceived as the best country, or you can have the best time in the worst country, just depending on who you're hanging out with. So Mm. yeah, it's very like obviously subjective, but yeah, I got like robbed. My laptop was stolen and my passport and everything like, and I was like broke at the time. So that was like not a good time. What happened? Basically like a local just followed. I stayed at a hotel. It was like 30 bucks a night or 20 bucks a night. And a local maybe followed me <laughs> in or like shadowed me in, but he got the room next door to me in the hotel. What? And then, yeah. And then he just waited for, I went out to lunch for like 30 minutes and he just sort of waited in the hallway. And when the cleaner came in to clean my room, he, she like grabbed some sheets or whatever and then like took the sheets across the hall and he just went into my room, grabbed my bag, dragged the bag into his room, went through the whole thing and then dipped with what he could sell. So, yeah. That's like, uh, yeah, we got it on very CCTV, premeditated. Baby. That is crazy. Yeah, I know. Is that like a consistent thing that people do there? Is, or I have is, no idea. But this when guy I, just a genius? <laughs> when I like, yeah, when I got the CCTV from the hotel manager or the guy that owned the hotel. He wasn't even shocked. Like he was just like, he even was telling me, I was like, Oh, well I don't want to stay here anymore. So like, give me my 30 bucks back or 60 bucks for two nights. And he's like, nah, <laughs> I think you paid non-refundable. I was like, what bro? Like, look, look at this footage of this guy stealing all of my stuff. He's like, well, eh, non-refundable. I was like, well, sounds like you're in on it. So, you know, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, actually, that might even be a thing. Maybe it's a whole... Yeah, I mean, they probably know that they can get like insurance. We can get insurance jobs, so I can eventually get it, claim most of it back. Did on you have insurance. insurance? Yeah, travel insurance. Okay, but good. So I got like most of the money back, but it was still like really annoying mm. and takes time. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like it is one of those things where it's like they know you're getting <clears throat> your things replaced. Yeah. At a margin of the cost. So they don't give a shit. They don't care. Or it's a um, budget airline equivalent of a budget hotel where it's like the upsell is all your shit gets stolen. Yeah, literally. No, that's literally it. Like <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> it's wild. Um, what three countries do you think should be on everyone's bucket list? Oh, and why? Pakistan. Interesting. Pakistan's like probably my top five countries I've ever traveled incredible place like wow the best mountains in the world the best landscapes i've ever seen in my entire life like you you can't even describe it you just have to go see like northern pakistan and you'll be blown away it's kind of like switzerland they have like beautiful mountains right and everyone rates switzerland it's like switzerland on steroids wow yeah because and it's super cheap compared Mm. But um, the only thing I know about Pakistan is that video where it's like the teacher and the kids are like, oh, Pakistan. Is yeah. <laughs> I'll sacrifice my life for Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. No, that's, a, that's, that's what I knew as well. That's all I knew. 
<laughs> I was screaming that when I was in Pakistan. That's all I was saying. People, they, they were loving it over there though. <laughs> they you know that just, video well, right? Like yeah, it's, like it's, you could just joke about that and they just like <laughs> love it. But yeah, like Pakistan's amazing. Um, another country that I really loved. Let's think. Oh, Kyrgyzstan. It's the same vibes as, as uh, Pakistan in a sense with like lots of glaciers, lots of mountains, lots of adventure. But like Central Asia is really un underrated. Like mm. Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. Um, yeah, like Uzbekistan, like that whole sort of Central Asia region. No one really goes. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's just not on like the travel hit list for most people. and Or it feels very foreign to the point where it's too foreign that they don't want to it's too uncomfortable, mm. but it's the easiest countries in the world to travel. Like visa on entry, you just like for most people, depending on your passport, but you just go in, hang out. Like everything is so easy, but like, it just seems like people, their lack of education makes people think like, I don't want to go there. So mm. Kyrgyzstan and then last but not least, oof, I recently came back from uh, Namibia. These are very, cool. very not expected places. I'm writing these down, but oh, yeah. <laughs> Namibia was amazing. Yeah, I just, I just ran a group trip there like three, four months ago, and it's like just stunning landscapes, like just beautiful. So Namibia is amazing. Their animals, their the desert, and uh, yeah, I just loved it. So super random, but very random. So they're the they're the three countries that sh you think should be out of all the countries in the world on the bu the bucket list. Like they're I mean, the I top can go three forever. Yeah, it depends if you want diversity because like obviously Pakistan and Kyrgyzstan have quite similar in regards to the landscape. You could sure. probably throw in like Laos in there or something yeah. to make it different. But there's yeah, I mean there's so many awesome countries. Georgia, yeah, another insane country. Yeah, yeah, with really good food. Nice. Uh, so yeah, there's I don't go forever. Yeah, so I'll add a few of those to my bucket list yeah. for sure. Um, what country, what was the one country that really surprised you? This, let's think about this. There's like, there's a few. I would say the country that surprises me the most is usually the country where I have the worst, like, or the little, like, expectation. Yeah. It's not really, come, it doesn't really come down to, like, it being amazing, but it's just sort of like, I don't expect anything from this country. So Lebanon was really cool for that. I was just like, oh yeah, I had a week free and I was like, oh, I'll just go to Lebanon for a week. And then ends up being the best. <laughs> but I went to Lebanon thinking, I don't know, I'm sure it's all right, but whatever. You know, I didn't really have an expectation or a premeditated like mindset going in. So the food, best food I've ever had in my life wow. from any country in the world. And that's in regards to, I wouldn't eat Lebanese food every day, but like I could get a $3 thing or a $30 thing or a hundred dollar thing. It just tasted elite. It didn't matter where you were in Lebanon or who you were buying from. It's just the food was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I met some really cool people and we went on some epic cliff jumping adventures. The coastline's amazing, beautiful, like summer vibes. So yeah, the Mediterranean, like it was just awesome. Nice. Yeah, nice. Lebanon. Yeah, I wouldn't have... Um I wouldn't expect many of these generally. So it's, they're interesting takes. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I could say Italy if you want. I'm Italian, so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's better. I like the, I like the different takes. Um, we spoke briefly about, you know, solo travel being a rite of passage and a very important thing for people to go through. So like run me through your experience growing as a human through travel and you know, how it, changed your understanding of you and mm. the world around you interesting i mean i never i'm like i'm so service level on the internet so this is actually like to have this conversation right now it's like oh well there's more to jordan than just a <laughs> happy face but i grew up uh in a christian household in mm -hmm. australia protestant christian mm -hmm. and uh like great life but by the t same with the university as well went to christian university mm -hmm. So my whole life was very like sheltered in regards to one mindset of living. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I left for the first time and took a gap year, I just realized like, whoa, like people live and believe and experience life through so many different ways. And I was doing it 
one small little bubble and I broke, once I broke out of that bubble, I realized I could, who am I? That's when like the journey sort of started like at 20, probably like 21, 22. I was like, oh, now I'm out of this little bubble that I grew up in with no one knows me and I can be whoever I want overseas. Like I control the narrative of whatever I show my parents, show my family at home, show my friends at home. So it's like, that's when you start to get challenged. So it wasn't until my first time overseas in a random hostel by myself or a random country with no connections to anyone. Well, that's when it's like, oh, who is Jordan? So I highly suggest everyone does that, like gets out, even if, because even to this day, like I'm like, I love Jesus and I am a Christian. Like that's just like, that's still narrative to what my upbringing was, but Mm -hmm my mindset around it is so different. And it's almost like I made, I've made those choices myself, Mm -hmm. whether people like, you know, lean into what they grew up with or they, you know, become, yeah, yeah, they've become a Buddhist or agnostic or atheist or like whatever they want to do with their life. Like I strongly believe in take, like leaving the bubble and just sort of like having that reflection of like, you know, someone offering you a cigarette and you're like, Oh, no one, no, like my family's not around, like my friends aren't around. That would have probably been in my home. Me just smoking would have been weird, weird or bad. So you have to like (laughs) ask yourself either why you, you don't want to. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, I challenge everyone to sort of like get out of their bubble once just to see how they actually really want to live because yeah, it only, it can only happen when you, when you leave the um, expectations. For sure. I I find it interesting having to go back and explore the reasons why you do things back to first principles when you're by yourself. Like you don't, you've got all of these people that have told you this is right, this is wrong, how how to go about it. And then when you're traveling or when you, you are alone or when you are faced in situations where you don't have your social net that Mm. puts pressure on you, it's like, what do I want? Yeah, no, it is also funny because like, all of your insecurities usually come from, you know, caring what other people think outside, like in your community at home. Yeah. Well, my family think, well, my friends think, but when you're in a random country with random people that don't know you from a bar of soap Mm -hmm. and you're just meeting them for the first time, you actually don't care what they think. Yeah. Like you're more free in that. Like, Oh yeah. I'm going to do this and then no one's going to judge me because they don't know who I am. Yeah. So it's almost like the lack of um, like relationships in, in an environment can help you like figure out who you are. But then also you've got to also come back into the people that love you because yeah. you can't just stick around with people that don't care about you. Just like you're like, what's your point? Yeah, for sure. I, I understand that. Sorry, go on. It's just, yeah, interesting to find that balance. Yeah. I, I wonder from your experience so far, how have you gone taking lessons and experiences that, you know, especially when you solo travel, I haven't done a ton of solo travel, but I've done a few key things that have been just very hard to put into words and they, they change you in certain ways. Mm. And then you go back to a world where people know you as an old version of you. Mm. And there's like a bit of a battle between them and the new version of you to try and find homeostasis again. Yeah. Like how have you, what's your experience there and what kind of lessons have you taken from trying to reintegrate into your existing world after you've had such a big experience? Yeah. I mean, it's, it is so interesting when you come, like when I go back to Australia, not that there's anything wrong with how anyone is living at any time, but when I go back to Australia, it's just like, for the most part, I'm like, oh yeah, like everyone's done another year. Yeah. They're a little bit older. They're either divorced or they have a baby, you know. <laughs> the binary. <laughs> yeah. Two options. You know, <laughs> and yeah, you, and you do miss those people, but you understand like, it's almost like you're not, you're not missing out on, on what's happening in, that part of their, like the world, because everyone's building their own little worlds. Yeah. So even if like, like when I go home to Australia, I see my parents maybe for like a month, just like hang out with them for a month. Yeah. Which obviously it's still hard to be away for like 11 months, but 
me in that month is almost like seeing, like if I was living in Australia in another city, I probably see them less. Yeah, sure. Than if I was dedicated like a month of my life. Yeah. So it's funny because you're like, oh, I wish I could go home and I wish I could just meet with my, with my people. But then you realize like, oh wait, everyone's just building their own world. And even if they're down to like hang out, it's like once a month yeah. is like a good hang. Yeah. Like, so I don't really feel like I'm missing out on too much. And you just got to realize like your time on earth is limited. So do whatever you want to do because yeah, like once it's done, it's done, you know. Mm -hmm. It sounds like as you've traveled, you've become a lot more intentional with the things that you do with your time, with the people that you care about. Yeah, time's always been the biggest value that, because everyone has the like to a degree, the the same amount of time. Yeah. Everyone starts with different amounts of money or wealth or privilege, but everyone has roughly the same amount of time. Mm. So like when I started out, I realized the value of time because I had no money. So I realized, oh, I can just like spend more time instead of money. Mm. It, that can be a very simple example, like taking a bus from like New York to Toronto, Canada is like 15 hours overnight. But $4. Yeah, <laughs> but like literally 10 bucks. Or I can fly there for 200 bucks and it'll take me an hour. Yeah. So I was realizing like, oh, well, I can do what everyone else is doing. I just will do it slower, take more time mm. and I can still travel. Mm. But that's the thing. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't even know where I was going with that, but something to do with time. What was the question? That you're being more intentional. Oh yeah. So that's the thing. Understanding that time is so valuable being able to allocate it to the things you love, the people you love and the hobbies that you love is like where you can feel that fulfillment. Yeah, you know? for sure. Like, yeah, because it's almost like if you didn't, like all we have to do is allocate time and, and I find like being relational with your time is the best way to not lose your brain for, <laughs> yeah, definitely. in this crazy world. Definitely. I mean, we're, we're at the end of the day, we're here trying to connect with one another and yeah. we're just... Yeah, like being relational is like sort of what I've learned. You know, I can go to any waterfall, any massive landscape, any incredible culture, nature. But uh, yeah, if you're not doing it with people, it's like, it's less of an experience. Yeah. Uh, you know you know what's funny? I've, again, I haven't traveled. I've traveled to probably like 16 or 20 countries now. Um, but there was one trip that I did by myself on purpose and it was the first one, it was in 2018, it was to China. I went to China for three weeks. Wow. And I, the, the logic was, I was like, I want to travel somewhere that isn't American or English speaking predominantly, that I haven't been, that isn't fucking ages away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, China, all right. And that country is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like it is one of the most beautiful country. It kind of reminds me a little bit of America with the way the landscapes change so much, the culture changes so much, mm. um, but Asian. <laughs> yeah. um, no one speaks a lick of English. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. But um, yeah, I, I, I had these moments where I would just see the most beautiful waterfalls or I would just go to this, like go to this ran random little like in, in this tiny village in you know below a massive mountain and i'm trying to explain what i want to this like chinese woman that can't <laughs> speak any english and it's just yeah. like so cool but i have no one to share it with mm. and those memories are like as cool as they are they're a little bit bittersweet because you get to in a weird way relive the memories with the people that you experience them with when you're with people you really like Totally. So how have you gone about kind of like managing that? Like, does it, does it feel similar to you or do you feel different? Well, that's where social media has been so impactful for me because when I'm doing it alone or solo, I can just share it with a whole bunch of people on the internet. Yeah, sure. And although they're not, they're not there, they're not experiencing it themselves with me. They still like come along for the journey and you can sure. like people will just message me or like sometimes I'll run into people in the street and, They'll be like, Jordan, <laughs> that time you did that thing. And I'll be like, 
I forgot about that. That's great. That's wild. Like you remember that? I don't even remember that. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like you, I still get that same reminiscing vibe from the people that have followed me for that long on social media. So yeah, social media definitely like helped me continue in to travel because I just like, I love sharing the world mm. with people mm. and yeah, they love, uh, and then also the other thing is when they go there, they send me a photo. I went here because of you mm. or whatever. Then you're like, dang. So then you, you're not there together, but you feel like you can share it still in some aspect. So yeah, no, that's what social media is so good about. So good about social media, but it definitely helps. For sure. Interesting. Okay. I had never thought of it that way. And you know, when I've traveled in the past, I've just started to get it into more content, but it has felt like cool, but also a little bit of a chore at the same time. And, but the idea that this idea and this concept is just another like thing in the can, in the, in the line of a positive as to why you should do it. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's so many reasons to mm. travel, right? I mean, so the content side of the travel. Oh, the content side. Yeah. Well, I mean, I personally like, that's the thing. People always say like, oh, don't you feel like you're, you're not as present. Actually, that's a good point. I'd love you to know? talk about this. Oh, don't you think you're just not as present? I'm like, no, nah. <laughs> I love, I, I feel the most joy is when I'm filming or taking photos or like using my camera. Like that's where I'm having, like if I'm watching a sunset, like sitting there and watching the sunset, that's nice for, you know, reflecting, being there in the moment, but I'm more present and I'm looking at more details of that sunset with a camera in my hand. Interesting. I'm like, like taking so many photos and obviously it's just not the, it's not the ideal Pre like when people think of presence, they feel like, oh, to be present, you have to be, it's almost like a meditative state, like mm. no distractions. Mm. But when I have a camera, people just think, oh, that's some chaotic energy running on every angle, every taking a photo, that looks good, that looks good. But like, that's how I want to experience the world. Sure. That's where I find the most joy. And that's where I honestly feel the most locked in with nature because if I wasn't, if I didn't have my camera or my phone, I'm not looking for the small little worm on the ground. <laughs> you know, like I'm always just looking for things like, like how amazing nature is mm. from an aspect of content creation. So, uh, yeah, it, like I, I feel like it does the opposite. Obviously I think, I also think I'm an anomaly and people just do not relate to that at all. <laughs> but, uh, cause I still feel like I'm one of the most present people I've ever met. Not that I've met myself, but <laughs> I'm sure you have. Yeah, like I just don't struggle with that. You know, yeah. I don't struggle with like uh, overthinking. Overthinking, <laughs> like the my biggest issue is like I'm almost too present because I don't schedule time zones with to call my mom. Like yeah. I'm really bad at like looking forward. Yeah, because sure. I'm just living. Yeah. So when it's almost the opposite issue where it's like, oh, like I, it's been a month since I called my mom. That's so bad. I need, oh, she's, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh no, it's a, an, another week went by. Like I'm just so not thinking forward thinking. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I get the L, but get the L. <laughs> take the L. It's tough. I mean, especially when you're constantly moving, you're constantly like in different locations and experiencing new things. It is, it is tough to like, book in those times to try and check in with the people that you care about. Totally. Yeah. For sure. The, um, do you, the next thing I was wondering around all of this was, do you, do you have any kind of like meditative practices that you do that keep you grounded while you're traveling a lot? Um, not really. I mean, people won't like this answer because it's a religious answer. Okay. But why, uh, why they won't like it? Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, it's so funny, like people on social media, they want you to like, you know, they obviously want you to talk about things you know. Hey, yeah. Jordan, what's the best places to go in Italy? Oh, yeah. well, Sorrento is really nice, but well, you can talk about, you know, yeah. Sis Sicily here and there, whatever. I, I know that, right? So I can give genuine advice. Mm -hmm. But then when there's a world issue that happens, oh, Jordan, what's your view on Australia? Like talk about Australia burning down. Yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. I have no 
idea. Yeah. Oh, apparently it was overrun with water or overrun with leaves and dry or I don't know, climate. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So why do you want me to talk about it? And then, and then people put the pressure on you to talk about it. If you do talk about it, you say something wrong and yeah. it just becomes a snowball of like, um, like a snowball of like incorrect decisions. So I just like, oh, well, if I don't know it, I'm not going to talk about it. I think that's a smart approach. To that's the, the thing. But then yeah. when, I, but then I always reply to them just in the DMs like, Oh, but I know about like Jesus. Mm. Oh no, don't talk about that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, well, you're asking me to talk about something I don't know. Yeah. But you don't want me to talk about the thing that I'm very certain on. Yeah. So it's hilarious in that way, but that's just the vibe I get from social media. So when it comes to, um, yeah, when it comes to like talking about spirituality and especially the, the, the more traditional. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Christianity, because obviously there's so much like negative, like, you know, religions destroyed the world in like so yeah, many ways. I, mean, I don't necessarily believe that. Well, yeah, like, you know, there's bad and good with like everything humans. Everything. So you humans can take control of anything. But so when it comes down to like me, um, yeah, when I say, oh, my meditative practice, well, yeah, I just basically like, yeah, I, I read the Bible, I pray, and that's. That's all I can say from like a anything somewhat routinely in my life. Is that a daily practice? Like run me through yeah. that. Yeah, it's like a daily. Well, I mean, it should be a daily uh, practice. <laughs> it, it definitely like with my routine of life, like I don't have that routine. So yeah. it's not. But yeah, like from a, like a mindset, I feel like I'm always just talking to God. Yeah. Like even it's you're not really like kneeling by the bedside praying sure it's just sort of like running through the day like almost like when you're just thinking to yourself in my mind i'm just thinking to god or like yeah. just having a conversation with god yeah and then yeah whenever i feel like anytime i need to be grounded or need direction uh in go any aspect i'm just like yeah go to the bible it's just like such good for me such good advice on how to live and then yeah just pray about it or all the other option is just like the meditative practice is just literally ca calling people you like want advice from. Sure. And just like, Hey, like I recently like, um, yeah, like I recently re started talking to a friend I hadn't talked to in eight years mm -hmm. just cause in my head I was like, Oh, they'd probably have a good take on this, <laughs> you know? So yeah. then instead of like being in my brain about it, I just randomly reconnected with an old friend. So, but yeah, I don't really have any of those like, Wake up, eat an acai, drink a matcha latte, and write down 10 things I love about myself. I don't have that. Okay. But uh, in a different way you do. In a different way I do. But it's more, um, I guess the biggest thing I like about Christianity is like there's just, no, from my understanding, obviously everyone's understanding is different. But for me, there's just no pressure. Mm. It's just like, like God's basically just person. called me to like be relational and love. Like, yeah. oh yeah, just love other people. Yeah. It's, and then obviously you can get into the nitty gritty of religion and you can be like, oh, this and this and that. That's gross. But like, if you just like keep it simple, be relational, love other people when you see the opportunity, like that's like a good foundation for a good life. So that's yeah. just how I sort of do it. And uh, it's got to be this far. Mm. So I'm pretty happy with that i've got an interesting take on all of this because i'm seeing the world around me in some part feel very lost like people are very lost right now and i think a big part of that is due to the fact that there has been a breakdown of the traditional like religious frameworks that people mm. have used for a very long time to be the guiding star of a good life and now you've got a generation or a couple of generations of people that are having to figure out these very long term human problems mm -hmm. from the beginning. <laughs> like starting again. That's like true. <laughs> There's a lot of deconstruction happening, which should happen if that's like, you know, if you feel like you've been brought up one way and you feel like, Hey, maybe I don't believe this. Definitely deconstructive. Think about it. Sure. Think about it. Sure. Yeah. But I guess where I see the fall apart is, 
in mainly in the West, it is in the lack of community. Yeah. And like, even if you're forced into a church or forced into a, you know, you grow up with just like people you're seeing weekly. Yeah. Every weekend you're seeing the same people. Yeah. So even if you don't want to be there or whatever, it's just like, at least there's a bit of consistency of like, yeah, that's, these are my people. Hmm. So now that people like really move away from that, uh, yeah, it's like you better sign up to a tennis club. Yeah, a football, a football club. Like run you've club. got a run club. A night club. Yeah, it's <laughs> night club. Whatever. Like you just like find a way to like build that consistent community again, where yeah. it's like familiar faces that hopefully genuinely are invested in you, like you, you're like you and them. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's the biggest. I think that's the biggest thing. Reli- like modern day religion has is like a strength of community mm. of just people where it's like, where if you don't, if you want to push away from religion, totally fine. I would too, but find those people yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Because if you don't have people, then it's just like, you just start. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like good, healthy community is like a common trend of good, healthy, like mental health. Mm, definitely. And when, when people are like, oh yeah, they're struggling with their mental health. I'm like, okay, well, who's in their life? Like, tell me who's in their life. Tell me what, where they're, what they're doing with their life. And, oh, they sit in a room all day. Like they mm-hmm. go to work, they come back. They just like spend their entire life in front of a screen. Oh, makes sense. In, obviously there's no science behind it, but for me, I'm like, yeah, well that makes sense. Like, let's get this, let's get this person like, like in a hobby with awesome people. Yeah. You know, definitely. So what, what do you think makes good community? Well, for me, good community, just it, it it's all surrounded by you investing in others and others investing in you. That's all it is. It's like, it's just like a, it's just like any relationship or any friendship. It's just like you're there for them. They're there for you. No questions asked, which is why it's, which is why it usually becomes a religious framework because, you know, people are called to just accept, obviously they don't all the time, <laughs> but they're called to like accept just you where you're at and then work you through and support you through that. So that's all very grounded in love. So yeah, like any community that like, is long-term that is super healthy. It just has like that element of love of like, wow, like why did that, like right now I'm like staying in my place, my friend's place in, in New York and they're just like, stay as long as you want. I'm like, no, but I feel in debt. And they're like, that's offensive. Uh -uh. You know, like their, their initial response is that's offensive. Yeah. Like, do you, do you think that, where on that level of friendship where you feel like it's some sort of barter or trade. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess. No, I don't like, obviously you guys are the best and I'll do anything for you. And they're like, exactly. And we would do anything for you. So stay as long as you want. Yeah. You know, it's a nice approach to it. Yeah. So yeah, to find, you just got to find a core bunch of people that like you can invest in and then they can invest in you. And then I think it just goes from there. But yeah, that can that's obviously a lot easier to say than it is to do. But so on that note, how would you? What are kind of the you know the three key things you think allow you to create a good community through social media? Oh, yeah, through the lens of social media. Yeah. Well, consistency is massive. Like, is that a trust? So consistency leads to trust. Is that kind yeah, of where like the, like why aren't you, I really want to understand like on the framework of like, let's go with religion makes good community. Community Mm -hmm. is extremely important. Mm -hmm. How do you, uh, with what you understand up here, move it into like a, like an online community through content? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Consistency is important. Like they say that if you want to be familiar with someone, I don't know who they are. Oh yeah. I've heard, I hear about they all the time. I, I, don't, I don't know who they are, but they you say You've got to be it. worried about they. They Dude. have a lot to say. <laughs> I mean, they could be a lot of people these days. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know who they are, but they say like, if you hang out with someone, let's say for three hours, like straight, that's not as good to familiarize with someone than spending 
than seeing someone 20 times for a total of three hours. Really? Yeah. So like if I was like, if I saw someone 20 times in a month, just like in random, like in a bar, like just a high buy, literally just like, hi, five minute chat, bye. If I did that like 12 times, instead of just like hanging out with someone at a picnic for like three hours, they say that the 12 times in a row is like where they'll feel so familiar with you that, that, that you're naturally in their mind to be like, oh yeah, they're a good friend. Interesting. So I see that in online as well, which is why I sort of start most of my videos with my face. Interesting. It's just because it's like consistency over anything in regards to like, oh, you want them to be familiar with you and trust you mm. and build that community. Well then you just show your face a lot and then eventually people will go from like, I'll oh, follow this random traveler to, oh yeah, Jordan. Like I, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've never like met in real life. Yeah. But yeah. Spaced repetition. Do you know that concept of when you're learning sounds, something? That, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know a ton about it. It just popped into my mind. But basically the idea that you learn better through just like little bits of learning and then a break and then a bit of learning and That's then a break. Me. And then it just starts 100%. to really lock into the... I don't know, synapses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Brain. Yeah. So I feel like it's friendship repetition. Yeah, yeah. Space repetition. <laughs> Facial <of> recognition. <laughs> repetition. <laughs> recognition repetition. Yeah. We got I, it. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. I was I actually was going to ask you about why you put a lot of the start of the videos with your face on it. So, yeah, well, that started from when I got on TikTok, I saw a lot of people just blowing up, like, that have an epic whale video that would get like 20 million views but then they would post an, a video of them talking or hiking or whatever with them. And it's like 3000 yeah. follow uh, 3000 views. And you're like, whoa, they gained 200,000 followers from one whale video. And then they gained, then they post another video and it's only got 3000 views. Like that doesn't check out. They just had 200,000 new followers. They should have at yeah. least like 50,000 people watching that. Yeah. Yep. But a lot of people, I saw that trend of like, Oh, a lot of people just being real confused. Like, why am I following this person? Yeah, and then they go to their page. Oh, that's the person that posted the viral, viral whale video. And they unfollow, or they just like it keeps swiping. So I just realized, like, if I have to sacrifice views for like, if I'm going to get, I'm gonna post the whale video with my face being like as a whale. Yeah, and, <laughs> like I'm gonna be like, guys, check this out, and then post the whale video. Yeah. Let's say it only gets five million views because I did the guys check this out at the start. That's more valuable. 5 million impressions on my face is more valuable than 20 million views of just a whale mm. with no relation to my brand. Mm. So I just thought, yeah, it's better just to, it's like people say like K's on the feet when it comes to running. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's just all like, you know, it, it's sore, it's sore, it's sore, but K's on the feet, you're just naturally, your muscle would just get better at like running. Then you'll just be like, oh yeah, I can slap out 10 K, no problem. Sure. Uh, it's almost like repetitions on the face. It's like, <laughs> like impressions on face is like, that's like my like return on investment. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, get as many le like impressions on face as possible mm -hmm. where people will just start to trust. Interesting. Yeah. So, so I want to dig into the community stuff a little bit more. So you mentioned the consistency. What are, what are a couple of other really important pieces to this? Yeah, consistency and then, um, yeah, then repetition of like visual repetition. And then also just like, I don't know, I guess just showing like you've got to give something to them, right? Yeah. So most of the time in social media, it's either education or entertainment. Yeah. You have to choose one or you can do both. Both can be in, in the same video, but... I mean, if you look at Brain Rod, it's both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... <laughs> That's what we try. <laughs> but uh, yeah, mainly just like uh, for me, I'm just like, oh yeah, like giving good vibes, yeah. like just giving everyone like a little slice of entertainment that's en interesting that people are just like, oh yeah, that almost like I was stoked I got to see that or he told me something new about a different culture or whatever. Like that's yeah. always my biggest videos is when it's like, you're just telling someone. Educating. In educating them about, way. yeah, like you're showing someone that something they're never going to see. Yeah. So like, they're like, people text me like, oh, I'm s like, I'm, I can't travel like you can. So I'm glad you're showing me this because I'm never going to go there. Like people with Pakistan, I'm never going to go to Pakistan. So I'm glad I'm seeing it through your eyes. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, it's just things like that. You're just like entertaining people in a way that like that that piques their interest, mm. but it doesn't have to be too complicated. Mm. What I'd love to get into some more detailed understanding of the content creation side of things. What, what run me through like what has your backpack got in it when you're traveling and mm. Yeah, how do you manage all of that? Yeah, it's been blown. It's been, it goes up and down all the time. I pick up all the stuff, but mainly it's just my camera. I got a camera gear in what, one bag. What and yeah, I got a Sony ZV-E1, which is vlogging. And then ZV-E1 as well. Yeah, it's good. And then uh, iPhone, mm-hmm. GoPro, mm-hmm. 360 camera, mm-hmm. and a drone. Do you have the GoPro? in lieu of the 360 camera or do you have them for different purposes? Like what's the purpose GoPro's of each camera? Mainly, yeah, GoPro is mainly underwater. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, it used to be the main thing. 360 is mainly for like, yeah, like those random like clips where it's like hard to frame. So you just whip out the 360. Okay. And then iPhone is the main camera, to really? be honest, for most of the stuff with short form. Yeah, do you just use filming. a mic for everything or do you no? sometimes not mic it? No, no. Usually just like filming everything with an iPhone and then mm. yeah Sony's just for like if you want like a high quality like either photo or video yeah the ZV-1 ZV-1 yeah for do you like have like a blogging. tripod uh, sorry like a I have like a gorilla pod for the ZV-1 uh yeah I have like a little gorilla pod um and it's like a monopod selfie stick for the others but interesting that's the yeah, the camera stuff but you don't need you Too honestly much. can do anything with it just you can just use an iPhone but yeah and then my Camera, my bag is just like, you know, like 20 pairs of undies, mm. five it. shirts, five <laughs> shorts. Yeah. Just, and then all like charges and whatnot. Yeah. But it's not too complicated. I don't really, yeah. I wear the same thing every day. So yeah. People are always like, why do you wear the same clothes every day? It's like, I'm living out of a bag. Give me a break. For sure. <laughs> well, on that note as well, what, what are like five travel items that you take with you when you travel that you can't live without? What are like the top five things you have oh. to have that'll actually, in an ideal world, someone's listening to this, make their travel experience like marginally better? Well, one, one is definitely a battery pack, like a good small battery pack because you never know what you need to charge. Where? Just, oh, just like a- Like portable. Portable charger? Yeah, like, like a, a good portable one? charger. Huh? Like a good portable charger? Yeah, like a good portable charger is just like life. One that can charge your laptop? No, not that far. Okay. Just like enough for like GoPro 360, whatever, just like phone on the, on the go. Cause how there's nothing worse than like- you know? huh? How many milliamps is Mine's like 24, but 24,000. 24, yeah. Seems big. Yeah, I think the limit is like- 20. The limit does not exist. The, the <laughs> limit for airports exists. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like they'll kick you like, if it, I think it's over 25 or 30, they'll like literally just like, oh, you can't tr- travel with that. So there's a limit there, but sure. battery pack. I love like a buff, you know, like a, like a, when you're going like skiing or snowboarding. Oh, you have like a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that just for like, it's so versatile for like, you can use it as a, like a sleeping, like eye mask. And then you can use it as like whatever you want. So I always travel with like some sort of like, like just a neck warmer kind of yeah, thing. Neck yeah, warmer. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's so valuable. It's so random. Like it's I've super never- random, but I like, <laughs> I need it. What's been the weirdest ta- like use of that item that you can think of? Um, maybe, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's like being used to like hang my phone when I'm trying to watch a TV show <laughs> on an airline. You can like somehow like jam it into like the back of the TV and then like hang it down and then like put your <laughs> phone in. Yeah, like it's just like <laughs> one of those things where you can just like randomly jam it to like make something work. So yeah, yeah, and I don't know three other things. You always need a hundred bucks, or you you should always carry like hundred or two hundred USD on you, regardless cash. of the country. Yeah, yeah, just regardless <laughs> of the country. No, genuine because like if your bank cards or something gets stolen, like if you don't have money, so I always have like two three hundred dollars just like on me. That's been very helpful in places that I just like, like, oh, there's no ATMs here. Like everyone respects the USD. It doesn't mm. even matter where you are. So for- Except for America. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the homeland. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's not too many items that I think you really need, to be honest. Like you can go, you can go without a lot, mm. but- 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Quickly though, I'd like to chat about our sponsor, Vitadrop. Vitadrop is an Australian-based hydration and supplement company that has four amazing products, one of which I try to take every night before bed, a magnesium sleep sachet. The first time I took this sleep sachet, I woke up the next morning with a 30% jump on my REM sleep, which was recorded on my Whoop, and I thought it was a typo. It has improved the sleep of both myself and people that I've recommended it to so much that I had one friend say to me, and this is word for word, mate, Vitadrop is life-changing. I spent seven hours straight asleep for the first time in 10 years, three nights in a row, and I can't believe it. They're also not a one-trick pony. They have a bunch of different drinks for different purposes, including a general hydration drink, a focus drink, which I have here, that can replace your morning coffee, and a collagen supplement. So if you're interested, use the code TOT for 25% off your next order. It helps you with a discount and it helps us allow the podcast to continue. So I think that's a win-win in my books. Now back to the episode. Um, back to the content stuff. I um, understand that you generally say, and it's clear by your videos that the hook at the start is the most important mm-hmm. part of the video. So given this is a video podcast, um, could you come up with a line for the hook for the trailer? <laughs> oh yeah. I'd be like, well, I always start my videos with what the heck. I don't know why. It's just like my mini brand thing, but I always like, it feels like it flows better when I just have that. I'll try not to do it though. You can do it. (laughs) I'll be like, like I would instantly zoom out my brain. I'll do it live in my brain. Yeah. Okay. Jordan, zoom out. What's something Jordan that's impressive. 10 years of travel, like traveling for free, traveling, like making money from travel. So I'd be like, I'd make the hook something like, what the heck and welcome to how to travel for free for 10 plus years. Let's go. <laughs> something like that. Or like, this is how I learned. Like, you know, something like that. This is how I learned how to travel for free for over 10 years. <laughs> this is how I traveled for free for the rest of my life. You know, like one of these hooks. That's what I would do for plugging this, I guess. You, you know what I find super interesting by just watching that yeah. is the voice change. Oh yeah. <laughs> it goes up into this like higher pitch. Like, and my hands start moving like a lot. Is that is that a th- skill that you developed over time? And I'm guessing like- I guess, yeah. Just like, I mean, it's still authentic to me, but it's just like, like, you're not going to believe what I saw. Like, you know, it's yeah. just like, it's almost like a social media voice. Yeah, I've seen it a few times now because <laughs> I mean, when I need to do the intros, Joe just roasts me because I'm just like, hey okay, guys. so on and <laughs> Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the party. <laughs> yeah, Let's get and, into it. And um, I wrote some notes. We started watching like Colin and Samir episodes mm-hmm. and their intros are really good. And I, my notes were smile while speaking because it makes you sad. Because <laughs> like, it's like, welcome to the podcast. It's, welcome to the podcast. I I'm not even doing anything different, yeah, but just, the smile it looks itself no, that that's changes true. your voice. The smile in itself changes your voice. Yeah, that's wild. No, I guess, yeah, like being able, one of the biggest strengths, I guess, is being able to talk to the camera. That's like a huge, like no one really talks about this, but if you can master talking to a camera comfortably, you're ahead of like 90%. Yeah. Like just not even in social media, just like- Just generally. In general. It's a good skill. Because like people are going to whip cameras onto you all the time. Yeah. So if you're comfortable like in front of a camera, you can usually seize the moment rather Mm. than- cowering out being like oh no camera yeah i mean look at trump when he got shot yeah (laughs) that's insane that is a that is a showman for 60 years that's insane like the fact that that was his first thought (laughs) i know bro like that's psychotic (laughs) like like get crazy like get down like you just someone's like trying to take you out and you're just like yeah. 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 I Dude, need to get a good photo. Honestly, that that show that's a, a, like a very relevant example of that dude has been in front of the camera His for a life, fucking yeah. long time and he gets it. In the most critical moment of probably his life, literally. Yeah. His thought was this is a great photo. Well, let's fucking do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's I rally mean, the crowd. Yeah. I know. That's the thing. It's like yeah. Crazy, crazy. Not that you want to use Trump as an example for life, but- But content. But for content, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I always say, like, you just got to, this sounds really bad, but I do say <laughs> content over consent. In, oh, oh my God. 
Now that's not what. That's not what you're thinking. And that's not what you're thinking right now. I'm talking about like you know, like the <laughs> special. What do they call the special people that protect him? The protect Trump. The um, special forces. Special service. Well, yeah, so, secret service. service. Secret service. <laughs> Look at this. We really yeah, are yeah. from America. Aren't yeah, we? we're so Australian. <laughs> so like the secret service, they're not going to give him consent to do that. Yeah. But he's like. I gotta get the content. Yeah, yeah. Someone falls over, they might be embarrassed in the moment and they don't want you to film. You know, but you they're just get the content. Well, I mean, film That's it right. <laughs> because after they're over their embarrassment, they've got the best clip ever and <laughs> yeah. you've got this epic piece of content. So it's yeah. always like, yeah, it's just like you just don't ask, you just film. Yeah. And then from a content perspective, that's when it works out. But yeah, obviously take content over consent very lightly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. Very, it's very uh, environmentally specific sure. to content <laughs> creating. <laughs> yeah. in, so. in a very innocent light. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Yikes. Look, at the end of the day, you're a good Christian boy. Just yeah, exactly. like, we will caveat that whole thing. But we have our struggles. We that's do. That's the beauty of- We do. That's the beauty of Christianity yeah. is that you're imperfect and you can make mistakes, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, um, on that note, I'd love to hear a story about like a time where you have filmed when you've been traveling and you've gotten yourself into trouble. Oh, one time I flew a drone over a festival in Estonia. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know that the festival was happening. I just like put it up. Oh, there's a bunch of people. But then the cops like found me. It's That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I don't know how they, they had Did like- they track you? Yeah, they had like um, serial- like they could zap the drone. And find the home base. Find the home base wow. and find the serial number. We had three drones in the sky in Estonia, in Italian, the capital of Estonia. And it was so funny, like three drones, the cops pulled up, take the drones down. Okay, we brought the drones down. And then they had like, they only zapped two serials. So there's three drones, two serial codes. And they're like, one of you is getting away. Oh. We only have two. Out of three. So one of you is getting away. So we line up and they just start reading off these serial codes with our drones and we're looking and we're like, oh, that's me. Uh, <laughs> so what, guy what happened? Looked, oh, they were so chill. They just like took our drones and said, come to the, uh, come to the police station like the day before you leave and show that you're oh. leaving the country and we'll give your drones back. Oh, okay. It's like absolutely chill. Oh, that's fine. But like, yeah, I guess I never really got into a lot of trouble there, but it was like a good funny story. Someone... Where I got in a lot of trouble. One time I got I got denied entry into the into the UK. Oh what? Yeah, yeah. That was probably my craziest travel story. You had a thirty six milliamp. Um, yeah, literally. <laughs> no, the lady was like, "You're trying to work in the UK," and I'm like, "No. Why would I? If I want to work in the UK and get a visa for five hundred bucks, like I'm Australian. Yeah, like it's very easy for me to work there." And then she just basically didn't believe me because she's like, she didn't really understand YouTube. She's like, <laughs> "You're gonna film YouTube videos in the UK." I'm like, yeah, probably. Oh, well, you're going you're gonna to profit off the UK then. And I'm like, well, that's not how that works. She's like, no, you're trying to work, Ben. Yeah. That's really weird. So crazy. But I ended up like, happened? they left me in a room for like- Three days. Like <laughs> literally like 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. Dropped me. And then the police came, denied me entry. I was in France at, at the border, like before going under. Dropped me, uh, the, then the police dropped me uh, on the highway in France at midnight. And they just said- Next bus is at 9 a.m. Good luck. And I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Like in the middle of nowhere. Everything's shut, midnight. It's like, well, next bus is at 9 a.m. We're just told to drop you here. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to hitchhike. <laughs> yeah, at, in the middle of the night. And I hitchhiked to <laughs> this random town that has like the ferry terminal. I think it's called Calais. And... uh yeah, I, and then everything was sh sold out, like no beds. So I slept on the terminal of the ferry. ferry. And then the next morning I was like, oh, I might as well, like I already have a big X in my passport from being denied entry. Might as well just try again. So I tried through the ferry terminal to go to England and the lady just let me through. <laughs> but yeah, I was like 24 hours of my life. They like locked me in a room for like 10 hours, put me under the light. Ask me all the questions. What are you doing here, Bawa? Seems unnecessary. It was crazy. Yeah. The lady, the lady went back on all my YouTube videos. She saw one where I was like, 
I was like, I'm broke. I need to work with brands. Like brands hit me up. Like I need money sort of thing. Like just being a bit of a jokester in one of these question and answer videos on YouTube. And she was like, and then I showed her my bank account because they asked for it. I had like 15 grand, whatever, 20 grand. She's like, well, three months ago, you said you had no money <laughs> and you've left on this day and you've been traveling for three months. So you've been making money in the last three months because you've got 20 grand in your bank right now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's satire, first of all. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm still working. She's like, well, that's proof enough. <laughs> Banned. And I was like, was she a Karen? Like, yeah, for uh, sure. It was I'm a, just getting the picture of a Karen. Yeah, here. it was she told me that like her name was Karen. <laughs> yeah, literally. She told me that if I were if I went to the UK like and stayed at my grandma's place and my grandma said if she's like if your grandma says do the dishes and mow the lawn every day and do the gardening every day and you can stay as long as you want. She's like that's still an exchange for exchange because you're taking a job essentially away from someone that can be gardening for her in the UK. So like that's an exchange and that's illegal. That's what you told me. And I was it's like- kind of wild. Yeah. So that was crazy. Like 24 hours, like dropped on the highway in the middle of the night in France. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. Cool. That's a, that's a wild story. I crazy. mean, border, I get so much anxiety going through the borders everywhere I go. Oh, now I do. Like even in America, I like, I like, I just spend a lot of time here because I'm always coming through. Yeah. But I'm like, don't ban me. Yeah, like I've, I've done nothing, but I'm just like, don't ban me. Yeah. I'm still editing video. It's like such a nuanced a thing. Cause one, yeah. I'm like, I'm not making money from America's economy, but I'm just sitting here editing videos. Yeah. But that's allowed, but it's like, oh, you know, you never know. Yeah. I understand. You just get the wrong person at the wrong time and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. My friend got banned for five years recently. <laughs> really? Yeah. From Australia? From America. Yeah, Australian guy from. To but America. how? My friend also got banned for five years. Uh, I mean, my worst I don't know if I should speak about it on air, but yeah. But the, the 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 core of it was he um was he was coming on a travel visa, but he was working remotely and like building a business that is an American business with American partners, but he could do it from anywhere in the world. Yeah, and he just happened to be chilling in America, and they were like, no, nah. they just denied him entry. No, but banned him for five years. But like, and now entry. he's in Australia. Yeah, building the business, <laughs> like the same business. Wow, that's wild. <laughs> um, and it was oh hilarious. He, he had the same issue. He was getting, um, he was in the holding cell for three days or two days or some ridiculous yeah. number and then got sent back like just like crazy. Is it because he like entered too many times? Yeah, so? yeah, yeah. And they'd flagged him already. That was yeah. That was where he got done. Um, I wanna, I'm conscious of your time. So I want to get through a few more things. Um, just speed round. Yeah, well, they, I want to get a feel for like your daily and weekly workflow as a traveler first and a content creator second. So what's going on there? Yeah, it's like usually I'll go on like a one or two week pretty hectic travel schedule, mm -hmm. filming everything every day, making the stories, making the adventures. And then it's just like the exact same thing, but just living in a hotel room. Like two weeks of editing, editing everything. Okay. Answering all the emails, doing all the scheduling. And then- Bang, back again. So it's like, it's not so like- So you block it into travel and then you block it into edits. Yeah, sometimes it goes too much travel. Sometimes there's a bit too much downtime, but it definitely like, it's probably like two weeks, two weeks. But yeah, I try and edit on the flow as well, like on the go. Is it hard? But it's, yeah, it's it's hard for me to focus. I just need to like, need to have like that blocked out time. Yeah. But are you just filming whatever you see and then coming up with concepts later? Or are yeah, you like it's like 50-50. It's like half of them are like, um, I have like the concept in my mind where I'm like, oh yeah, I know I'm going to film. I know I'm going to film that. I'm not going to do this. Like, you know, even in New York, I can think straight away like, oh, people are interested in dollar pizza. People like Times Square. I'll make a concept around that. But then the other times it's like just adventuring around in a country I don't know anything about and then finding stuff and then just being like, okay, that's cool. Write that down. Yeah. Yeah. And then do you... So do you just try and experience as you're going and or are you like content first at all times now? Um, no, it's like, it's still, it's still probably 50, 50. Mm -hmm. Like I will travel to a place knowing that there's a good video to be made. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the time it is just me like exploring and then like seeing what there is mm -hmm. and then filming things around that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would like to move into the more planned travel 
mm-hmm. or planned content mm-hmm. because then it allows me to live a more normal life. Sure. Rather than like constantly just You're like rolling concepts. around. Yeah. Just being like, I need something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. oh, yeah. yes. An old lady that works at a tea factory that yeah. is super cool. You know, yeah. like you're not just going to plan that. So, yeah, it's like 50-50. Mm. To find the really good stories, sometimes you just need to like be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I mean, the really good stories feel like come from the unique things that you don't expect. Exactly. So, uh, it's probably it's probably hard to. Do you... So you're just kind of vibing, you're taking videos when you see things, you're like, oh, that's an interesting concept. I might spend half an hour here and film some stuff and see if I can make something out of it. Yeah, like it's very much like with short form, it's very much on the go. Yeah. It's sort of just like, like the other day I was walking down the street in New York and then there was the like those Buddhist scammers. Oh yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, well yeah. I'm here. There's a scam artist. May as well film it and like be scammed like for the lulls of the content. Did you tell him you were filming or are you just no, no, filming? Just filming. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to tell a scam artist I'm filming. They'll literally not film with me. <laughs> You're like, like <laughs> welcome. And today we have, <laughs> today today we have scammer. a scammer. <laughs> Hello, scammer. How are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah but that sure. was like an off the cuff video that I was just like walking down the street. Yeah. That wasn't like planned. Yeah. And then, yeah, just went from there. There you go. Okay. And, um, you know, just, just for my own understanding, cause I think it's quite interesting. Like I'm not a good graphic designer, but your thumbnails are amazing. Um, and I know that they're so important to convert for, yeah. uh, for YouTube and stuff. So, um, what would you, if you were advising like a graphic designer to build out your thumbnails, what would the brief look like? Yeah, I mean, I still feel like I'm very much in the midst of like trying to figure that out for myself. <laughs> like I, I love that the, the, the you love the thumbnails um but yeah i still feel like i haven't found the perfect niche but like with a graphic designer it's like you've just gotta find the best thumbnail that suits the video it's not always like the most impactful one it's just the most impactful one that like is accurate mm. like oh you click on a thumbnail and then you delivered what that thumbnail says. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's more important than just like finding like the most insane thumbnail. Yeah. You know? I mean more like what are you saying to the graphic designer to get their framework of thinking? It's like, okay, like six letters, you're going to have like certain fonts, you're going to have certain color waves. Like what? That, that's kind of where my head was. Oh, at. right. Yeah. I guess you just got to make it as eye-catching as possible. Yeah. Whether that's using black and white. Everything. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Whether that's like using black and white, some of the most impactful ones are black and white because they stand out amongst the, col- all the, the color. Colors. So it just really does depend. But no, I have like thumbnail is a whole thing. Like I even have a whole like team that helps me with it. It's yeah, not even nice. just me. It's like, it's like someone holds, there's people out there that like their whole job, six figure job. Is thumbnail designer. That's insane. Yeah. So it's big business these days, isn't it? It is wild. Yeah. Well, look, I'm. I, I'd love to do a few like end questions about just like philosophy yeah. and stuff, and then we'll wrap up. But uh, what view do you have right now that would make people either angry or scratch their heads? Mm. What view do I have that will make people angry or scratch their heads? Something I always say is like, nothing matters. <laughs> but everything matters that's the thing like but my life matters <laughs> yeah like nothing matters which is like that will make people angry and scratch their heads because it's like i can make it angry in regards to like oh we should care about the earth i guess we should probably we probably should but like does it really matter like the earth's gonna outlive you it you will. know what i mean yeah but then the only other caveat to that is like nothing matters, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't care. Or be a dick. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? like nothing matters. Do your own thing. Nothing really matters, but don't try and avoid hurting people if you can. Yeah, like nothing matters, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. So that's sort of like the caveat to that is like at the end of the day, live your life, do your thing, be passionate about what you're doing, find your passion and live that because at the end of the day, like, Nothing really matters from a social environment, but like it only matters if you if you care enough. So yeah. it's like yeah, I don't know. Well we make meaning out of Yeah, we make we around. yeah, you put the meaning on it. So hmm. 
And what's the biggest thing you've changed your mind on over the last two years? Oh, probably the community aspect. Mm. Like now I need to realize, I realize now like, oh, community is so important. Two years ago, I was just still running around like a whim. Now I'm like, oh yeah, I need to find a base. Yeah. Otherwise I need, like I need, I want to have like people that have got my back in yeah. my life. So that's my, yeah. oh. but, uh, sorry, but, uh, yeah, probably the community aspect. And then also understanding like life's a journey. You're not right. You know, like it doesn't matter like what you're believing now. If you like in 10 years from now, you probably have different beliefs mm. to some degree of what you were saying 10 years ago. So it's always just like learning Yeah. where like Jordan at 27, 28, like a few years ago would have been like, I'm right. Mm. I'm right. Mm. I know. Mm. But now I'm like, no, you know nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, on that note, what would you, what piece of advice would you give yourself from 10 years ago? 10 years ago, Jordan, I would have just said like, like, honestly, you can just do anything. Just like dedicate the amount of time to it and you can do it. Mm. Like I don't, I felt, mm. I probably felt like a little bit more doubt than I do now. Mm. Where now I'm just like, oh, I can really do anything. Mm. It's like, that's the thing with social media that's funny is like, people say, well, it's amazing. I could never do what you do. And I'm like, well, you could. <laughs> you just don't want to dedicate 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's just an algorithm thing. It's not like I'm Brad Pitt and I'm like one of the best actors and I've got this like look about me that can't be re re like reciprocated, like or recreated. Hmm. It's not like I'm, I have like this unit, like I can just put, like if I dedicated my life to making you huge on social media, we can do it. Mm. It's, it's just about, it's a commitment and pivoting, commitment and pivoting and like making something work. Mm. Some people go, oh, wow, it's amazing. Like you're so like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, well, not really. I, don't, <laughs> I feel a bit of imposter syndrome, syndrome there because I know how to do it. Yeah. If you had my knowledge on how to do it, you could do it as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, it's sort of just, yeah, but if I was Jordan 10 years ago, I'd say, yeah, like, eh, you'll be fine. That'll be a, she'll be right. Just keep chipping on. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the kindest thing anyone's ever done for you? Oh my word. So many kind people. I owe my entire life to the kindness of others. Like I wouldn't be in this career right now if it wasn't for the kindness of others. Cause early days, like I just relied so heavily on people to like open their homes to me and stuff. Mm. So the kindest things, yeah, outside of like opening their homes to me and just taking me places, I don't know. There's just so many like individual examples of just like people being legends. So That's one that pops into your mind right now? Like when I was, I don't know, like seven years ago, I was traveling through Hawaii, Kauai, on the island of Kauai. Hawaii is flipping expensive. Mm -hmm. And an old man... He's like retired, like 80 years old, anesthesiologist from New York, actually. But retired, moved to, never had kids, whatever. He, I, Yeah, I think he was gay, so he just never had kids. And he just like lives his life out there. He just like took me in for a week. I had no money, no food, nothing. Like How'd you I find no, him? Yeah, he just like, how did I find him? Through couch surfing. Oh, cool. And yeah. he just like took me in for a week. I stayed for like 10 days in his place. He would buy me like every night, like would go to sushi legend or whatever. Like he just like, let me have open, open season on his fridge, like his car. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Just a random kid. Like, yeah, do whatever you want. I just lived with him for 10 days in Kauai. Like I saw the whole Island. That's so fun. Yeah. Things like that. Like that's happened to me a lot. And I'm like, it's all just the kindness of strangers. Yeah. And that happens all over the world. So you just have to be open to it, I guess. But like, Things like that I'm indebted to because it's just like it gave me that little bit of extra time so I can keep creating content and keep trying to make it work. Mm. Yeah. Nice. So is there anything that you're excited about at the moment you want to let the listeners in on? Ooh, yeah. I'm starting up my a brand. Nice. I'm actually wearing it right now. Nice. So that's coming out in the next month. It's called What the Heck. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But uh, that's coming out. That's going to be fun. That's all I'll say about that for now, but that's like just going to be a very fun, different brand. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Nice. And um, where can people find you if they're interested? 
Jordan Tawali on all platforms. Uh, Jordan with an E, J O R D E N. But there'll be a link somewhere, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, otherwise you can just Google annoying Australian traveler. Oh, I did Google that and you came up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, many ways to find me. <laughs> and what do you, the last question for today is um, what do you think the meaning of life is? Oh, well, we've already touched on this, but I am, again, a Christian. So in that, my, I auto trigger to like what that mission is, which is to love God and love others. So you can just take away the, like, if you're not religious, religious, just, or you don't believe in like a high power, just take away the love God part and you'll still get immense benefit from loving others. Yeah. But yeah. That's be just being relational. Yeah. Existing and being relational is like the goal of life. Yeah. So just so. like great connections with good people. Yeah. Giving where you can, loving where you where you have the ability to do so. Yeah, exactly. And we're always failing at it. Like, you know, we always, this is why I feel like I need God. It's because I always tend to fall back into like being selfish. Mm. I, I fall into the elements of like being a crappy human. Mm. And in a lot of ways, like I'm thinking about myself what's best for me. And that's obviously not the goal when you're trying yeah. to love other people. So that's why I feel like God helps me with like, Hey, don't be the worst, but, um, <laughs> do a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when you can love others, it's just like, I don't know, like there's nothing, it's so corny, but like, that's just what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Unfortunately, it is it is. it's just how it is. Yeah. Jordan, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. Thank you for coming. Thanks Thank man. you for, Yeah. The, the deep insights. We had a really good wide ranging conversation. Yeah. Hopefully there's a, hopefully there's something you take away from it. Yeah. <laughs> there'll be plenty. There'll be plenty. Um, and look, anyone else listening to this and has got to the end, please give this a subscribe, give it a rating on Spotify or wherever you're looking. Um, and let us know your thoughts in the Q and a or the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, thank you. You. Yeah. And three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> nice.